Hey kids, it's the Bisson and Fly here, hope you're well. Now it's been absolutely ages since I rode the Street Triple R. In fact, to my great horror, when I look back in my uh, schedule, it's been about eight, nine weeks since I, since I rode the bike last. I've never left the bike that long before. Uh, and it's something that worries me because you sometimes hear that if you leave a bike standing for a long time, you could do the bike some damage if you're not using it regularly. And I don't like leaving my bikes not used. So what are the sorts of things that uh, can have an impact on your bike if you're leaving them not used for a while? Well, the first thing that comes to mind, for me at least, is uh, petrol. If you're leaving petrol in the tank for a while, isn't it going to go off? Well, that's a bit of a misdemeanor these days. Certainly back in the 1990s when petrol wasn't uh, quite as high-tech as it is now, it could go off if left for a long period of time. But these days, if you store your petrol in a metal fuel tank, then it'll last at least a couple of years without going off. Uh, if you store it in a plastic fuel can, slightly different, because um, the, in fact it's to do with the tightness of the molecules in the plastic. And it can actually let some of the petrol fumes and vapours out through the plastic over time, uh, which can cause an issue. But, uh, but again, if it's in the bike and you've got a full tank, it's not, it's not an issue. It can be in there for at least a couple of years. In fact, I remember some, uh, many years ago, in fact, it was before, uh, it probably was about 1990, I had an old moped uh, and it hadn't been run for about five years when I purchased it. We did a clean up on the, on the bike and uh, it started first time with the petrol that was already in there. So petrol, not an issue. Of course, it's not just petrol in the tank that, uh, that you have to consider, but of course, petrol within the fuel system itself. Now, again, in the old days, um, in, if you had a carbureted bike, uh, it could be an issue. Petrol used to go a bit sludgy after a couple of years, but modern petrol in a fuel-injected bike, again, not really a problem, so you don't need to have to worry about that. Uh, the other thing to think about is the battery, because of course if you leave that over time, particularly in cold weather, that can uh, discharge over time without you actually you know, using the bike. So, uh, so what can you do about that? Well, of course, the obvious thing is to make sure the battery stays topped up. And I've got, uh, I've got uh, one of those fly leads on here, so I can just plug it into the battery charger and charge it up when I like. So about four weeks ago, I did top the battery up, so I'm pretty confident about the battery on this particular bike. So other than a thing like just checking the tyre pressures, I think we're probably pretty good to go on this bike. I'm pretty confident she's going to start first time. We'll see, we'll see in a minute. Um, I have missed the bike. I've been um, uh, deflected with my attention to other machines, as you may well know if you've watched my other videos. I've been running in my new Panigale, so I've not ridden this. But uh, it's a lovely day out there today. It's very, very cold. It's about two degrees, but it's very, very sunny. I'll go and get suited up. Stick around, stay tuned. Let's go for a ride on the street triple. Right, will she, won't she? No! Oh dear! Maybe I need to charge the battery some more. One more go. No, completely dead. Right, one more try. Oh, come on baby, it's only been eight weeks. Nope, dead as a door now. Oh well, so much for that. Let's get the battery on charge for a couple of hours. So, three hours on the battery charger and the bike starts on the button. So uh, yeah, three hours and, uh, and no problem at all. So obviously the battery had lost its charge over those four weeks or so since I last put it on. But I'm glad to say she's running absolutely lovely now. And just reminded me what a great bike the Little Street Triple is. Lovely engine, lovely and smooth the Triple, sounds fantastic. The quick shifter is brilliant. Nice and light and flickable, comfortable as you like. Great riding position after the Panigale. One thing I have uh, noticed, which surprised me a bit, is uh, I'm noticing the wind blast in my chest, which I had got used to before when I was riding this regularly. But after having ridden the GS and the Panigale, I've been uh, cushioned in fairings, and it's sport me a bit. I'm having to hold on quite tight now. Let's listen to this engine. Say so the quick shifter has loosened up a tree in here now. It works really well. In fact, I think out of the three bikes I have with quick shifters, this is the smoothest now. Yeah, the little street trivial hasn't lost any of its appeal, glad to say. This is the ultimate back lane scratcher. In the summer, the weapon of choice for these sorts of roads. It's nice and dry and warm. Wait, 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 thank you. 
it's over. Lots more rides then. So what have I learned today? I guess I've learned, don't worry about petrol going to stand in the fuel tank ever because it's just not going to happen. But do leave the bike on trickle charge or you end up with a flat battery. Of course I only have to do that a couple of times and the uh, battery will lose its ability to keep charge and I'll have to buy a new battery so keep an eye on that in the next couple of rides. Lovely to be out on the little street triple again though. As fun as ever, flickable, light, powerful, sounds wonderful, comfortable. Most you could do with some heating grips. Okay, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.